everybody. Just wanted to do a quick video showing you my latest printable and it is called A Lovely Christmas. So there's a new printable this Christmas even though I know a lot of you bought last year's uh, Christmas album for this year. So last year we did um, was the pocket digital printable and you can look it up on the website. Um, if you use the search engine on my website it is perfect for finding anything that you might want. So last year's was called 12 Days of Christmas so you can just type in Christmas if you want to, or 12 days, and it should pop up. Um, and this one's called A Lovely Christmas, and I've already cut mine out, and I've folded them, and I've um, rounded my corners. But here's one page here. It comes with a whole bunch of add-ons. And I'll show you those a little bit later in this video. This is going to be a pretty long video because we're going to be working on this project together a little bit. So originally I was going to do the Coptic stitch, but I changed my mind, and I want to do something else. So I'm going to end up cutting these pages in half. So this is the filler page that prints out. Now, keep in mind, I'm running out of blue on my printer. Actually, I'm not running out of blue. I just, I damaged my, uh, what is the rolly thing called, Garrett? Drum. I damaged the drum to my blue toner, so the blue's not working right. So these colors are a little off. They're a little more yellower than they should be. Um, but there's tons of patterns, and you can see where the, this is where the drum was damaged, so that's why the color is off there. Um, so I figured that out. Anyway, so um, the colors will be a little more richer when you print them off and a little more greener looking on the greens and the blues. So there's those, and I'll show you the add-ons in a bit, but I'm going to show you how I'm going to do my cover. So the printables, if you cut them out into separate pages instead of doing a two-page thing, it ends up being 5 by 7 so your covers would be 5 by 7 So these are 5 by 7 chipboard pieces. And I'm going to show you how to get this wood grain technique, which is really cool. So you want to flip it over, or I'm flipping mine over because I already did that side. I'm going to do the inside now. You're going to do a layer of matte multimedia by Claudine Helmuth. This is my favorite stuff. I use it every single time I scrapbook. Um, and you're going to coat the entire surface pretty nice and thick. And I just use a fan brush to do that. I've already done that. Next, I'm going to use gesso instead of white acrylic paint just because I feel like it. And I've got a little bit of water here. I don't know. Hopefully, you can see it on camera there. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my fan brush. I'm dipping it into the water. Then I'm gonna grab some gesso, dipping that into the water. And this is just so I can brush it on here easy, easily. And I'm gonna do a pretty thick coat. And of course, you can use white acrylic paint for this too, but I just feel like using the gesso because it's nice and thick and really opaque and I'm only gonna have to do one coat. All right, so it doesn't have to be, your strokes don't have to be perfect or anything like that. So do that. And then I'm using this Martha Stewart wood grains um, tool, I guess. It's kind of like a rubber stamp. Looks like this. And the top adjusts a little bit, so I'm gonna adjust mine. And you're gonna start at the top. You're gonna press nice and hard, and you're gonna pull down while you're rolling the stamp on there. And you can do different things to get like little knots like that. You do the same thing on this side. And if you don't like it, you can always go back over it. Like that. So you could do it a few times to kind of get that wood look. But isn't that cool? So that's the effect that I've got. See, so I've got a little knot there. So it just depends on how you roll while you're dragging. I'll do one more. I'm going to let this one dry because I like that one. Grab some more gesso again. And gesso is basically, it's a primer, but it's pretty much like white acrylic paint with some chalk in it. A few other things. I think it's a little, a little more complicated than that, but that's, that just gives you the basic idea. This is what your canvases that you buy at the store are already primed with, so. And we're gonna do the same thing. Sorry, I'm super sick, so I sound horrible. And we're gonna drag and roll at the same time. And you're pressing firm the whole time. And I kind of messed up with that one because I needed to click this into place. Ah, sorry guys, this one's, there we go. So you can kind of keep 
going back over it until you get the look that you like. And I kind of like that one actually. It turned out kind of funky, like pill paint. So that's how I'm doing my covers. I've got the backs done already. So I'm going to let those dry and then I'll be back to show you how I'm putting my book together. Okay, so I've decided that I want to use one of Tim Holt's um, little binder thingies here and make a book out of it. And I figured it's a pretty good size for this book. So this is going to be a 5 by 7 book. This is, these are my covers, so we need to make a book with this. So I've got another piece of chipboard cut into um, 7 by one and a half. So it's one and a half inches wide, 7 inches tall, just like my book covers. And then you're going to need two pieces of craft paper. This one is cut at five, or I'm sorry, seven inches tall by three and a half inches wide. You're gonna need another one cut at nine inches tall, three and a half inches wide. And you're gonna score one inch from the top, one inch from the bottom, one inch from both sides. And that'll keep you with this, that'll give you this middle piece which is one and a half inches wide by seven. And that is where this chipboard piece is gonna go ultimately, or eventually. This piece, you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna score one inch from the right and left side, but not the top and bottom, because you don't need to for that. And next, I'm going to, because I wanna add something a little fancy to this, so I'm gonna go ahead and border punch these edges. Oop, come on, get in there. And I'm gonna do the same thing. Um, with these two sides on this longer piece. So I'll be right back with that punched. All right, so I've got my pieces border punched, just like this. I really love this lace border. This is um, the Martha Stewart punch that I used. So now I've gotta get this whole thing ready. So I'm gonna start gluing some pieces together. I'm gonna to take this long piece in my covers first and just decide which side you want to end up being your cover. Um, I want this side to be my cover, so I'm gonna put that face down, and you'll already have your score lines. I hope you guys can see this on video, but my score lines are here, so I know exactly where to glue my cover down on there. And then decide which piece is gonna be your back. I think I'm gonna have that side be my back. So this side that you're seeing is the inside, is gonna be the inside of your book. So before we go, before we glue this down, you want to make sure that you're not bumping this edge all the way up to this line here. You want to um, leave a teeny bit of a gap. So I'm going to see if I can show you how much of a gap I'm leaving. So I'm going to glue it down to right about there. So see, I'm leaving an itty bitty bitty gap. Can you kind of see it? So that's how, and I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And how we're going to do this is we're going to grab some really great glue. This is Fabri-Tac by Beacon. And I'm going to put a thin line of glue up to that lace border edge. And then I'm going to come down like this. And I'm leaving a gap, like I said, too, because we don't need glue in that part right now. And then we're just going to glue this down. Just make sure you're top and bottom are nice and even, and you're gonna do the same thing onto the other side. And so that's gonna come down, I'm leaving that little gap, I'm not bumping it all the way up to that line. Perfect, so once you've done that, you're going to set that aside and let it dry. Then you're gonna pull these two pieces out. Now this piece is going to be glued over the top piece of your chipboard. So take your little binder piece here and center it on there. You're gonna have a little more than a quarter of an inch on each side and I'm just eyeballing mine. This is just telling me where I'm gonna be putting this but I'm not putting it on there right, right now. So I'm just making some little marks. But those are where my brads are gonna go. All right, and then now I'm gonna turn this over and glue this piece right to the middle there. So this time I'm putting the glue, or actually, sorry, you're not gonna glue that down first. You're going to 
Okay, so this is going there. So where these marks are, I'm going to go ahead and punch a hole. Ah, my crocodile doesn't fit all the way, so I guess I just have to make that hole myself somehow. I'll use these scissors. Okay, so I'm making my holes here. Now, we're going to put glue in the middle between those holes, but not at the top and bottom. And then you're going to glue that chipboard right in between those four lines. Just like that. Okay, so now you have something like this, and you'll notice only the middle is glued down. And I've already punched holes through my chipboard piece. And you're going to go ahead and put your metal piece in with the brads, because we don't want these brad ends um, to stick out on the outside of our book. We want it to be nice and clean and seamless for the most part, or as seamless as we can get it. So we'll stick the brads in there, press it on the table, make sure those backs are flat. Now here is the tricky part. We're going to glue down this chipboard piece right in the middle. so. This piece is going to be centered right inside your score lines, and you'll see it fits perfectly. Just make sure you check the top and bottom to make sure it's perfect. And you're going to start by gluing the chipboard piece down only first. So make sure you get a lot of glue, especially around those metal brad backs. Right up to the edge as well. All right, so I'm going to flip these flaps up so I could see where I'm positioning it. And this is how we're going to get a really seamless looking binder. Alright, and then you're going to press down nice and hard. And these two pieces on the outside are already scored for you. So what you're going to do is these are going to fold right in like this. So you're going to put glue right even on that covers here right along this edge, not on the lace part because you don't want glue seeping out of your border punch there. You're going to flip that over, and then this piece is going to get glued down to that piece. So you can go ahead and put some glue on there now. And you're going to hold that down, and you're going to do that same thing for the bottom. All right, now that you have that done, you're just going to go ahead and go in, and you're going to work your folds here. Now this is why we needed to leave that gap. So work those folds, and you can see where the chipboard, or the craft is lifting up where we didn't glue down. Don't worry about it right now because we're gonna do something fun with this a little bit later. Um, now you can easily glue that down just by, you know, sticking your glue tip in there. Only needs a little bit of glue. And you can also glue this side, this part down before you glue that top and bottom flat, but no harm, no harm done doing it after the fact. Especially when you're like me and you're doing this on the fly. Now, what's great about this fabric tack glue is if you get a little bit on your paper, you just keep rubbing with your finger and it'll come right off. But we're actually, if you leave a little bit on there, it's not a big deal because we're going to coat this whole thing with some matte multi-medium to make sure it all stays together nicely. So go ahead and let that dry, work your folds a little bit and then you should have a binder like this and then we're going to take the matte multi-medium and we're going to coat the whole thing. Okay so now I've taken my papers and I've trimmed off a half inch um, off one side because if I kept it five by seven it would stick off the edge so if you want your book to be bigger if you don't want it to be this small you can just make your shipboard covers a half inch bigger. Um, but I just trimmed my pages down so they'll go in here like this and I'm going to use my crocodile to punch my holes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a template with one of my pages. I'm just going to hold it up to the binding here and I'm going to mark right about where those rings are. And right about there. And then I'm going to punch my holes and stick all my pages in and when I come back I'll show you what I've done with my book. All right guys, here it is. I coated the whole thing with matte medium. You could tell there's kind of a sheen on my craft paper. And then I glued some bling chain 
on the front and the back just to give it some sparkle. And there's Prima Flowers, Tim Holtz, um, Number Plates, uh, Prima Birdie, Prima Vine, Tattered Angels Glam in a Big Apple on this Tattered Angels frame. Some washi tape, a uh, pink paisley stamp there, my mind's eye tag, a little bit of everything on this one. These are Prima um, Alphas from my romance novel line. I use my vintage trinkets but closure here. I just added a little strand of pearls. If you guys are looking for these mini album closures um, with the clips, they are at Hobby Lobby, but they're kind of hard to to see what they are. Um, so if you go to Hobby Lobby over in the Prima section on the very top of the uh, display there, you sh you'll see my vintage trinkets line from my first line release with Prima. And they still have them, so they look like that. And they just clip on and they keep your books closed. And if you like making chunky books, they're perfect for you guys. So I haven't done a whole lot on the inside. I, I pretty much just glued my pockets and glued my pockets together and stuck them inside the book, so I'll show you. And these pockets are add-ons. The add-ons are the pockets and tags that you're going to see in here. And keep in mind, yours aren't going to look this pink because my toner is just out of the cyan. So this one says um, he's making a list. You pull the tag out and it's Santa Claus with his list. And then these are add-ons to these little tags. These are the advent tags. And I attached them on here with Brad's and I thought it would be kind of cool to write something about each day of the month and not really do so much an advent calendar as just like little memories from each day of the month and you can swivel them like that or lift them up however you like and you can see what your favorite memory was of each month or you could take a picture every day and use like a little oval hole punch which is I, th I think what I want to do only I'm already behind and um, so you can use a little oval hole punch that would be really cute and stick the pictures underneath each tab from each day so it goes up to 24 actually it goes up to 25 but the 25 is Ah, not on my next page. Where'd it go? Um, shoot. I had it here a minute ago. Well, I guess we'll find it as we go. It's somewhere in here. Anyway, I added some little envelopes. This is a my, my mind's eye Brad. Uh, here's another pocket and tag that's an add-on. And um, it has a little milk cart on there with a gingerbread cookie. And it says a favorite family recipe because everybody has a favorite family recipe, especially one that is done every year at Christmas. At least we do. Um, so there's something that you always look forward to having or ask your aunt or your uncle or your grandmother or whoever what their, fav what their uh, recipe is for something that you like they make every holiday. Um, I added some craft envelopes. And like I said, I barely did anything in here because I'm not feeling very good right now. But I thought I would just show you. And oh, here's my 25. So this 25, I forgot that I put it at the end of the book because that's when Christmas is. So here's another um, pocket with a little bingo tag inside. And here's 25. So I thought what would be cool is I stuck this on an envelope and I thought you could kind of recap um, what the Christmas was like, who is there, and all that good stuff, and stick it in this envelope. But stay tuned on my website, MarianSmithDesigns.com. You can use a search engine to look up Lovely Christmas or Christmas, and this should pop up with all of our Christmas stuff because um, every few days this month, I'm going to be posting an add-on to this kit. So a few of the add-on printables that I have, one of them is um, like a guest list type thing, so you can write down who, who all was there at Christmas. And um, there's another little card list that tell, that you can write everything that you got for Christmas or your kids could write everything they got for Christmas and all that good stuff. So there's going to be a lot of add-ons for this and stuff that you can use along the way throughout the month. And right now most of my journal pages are showing. This is the filler that you print on the back of your pages. Um, but these are good to have because then you can cover them up with tons of pictures and glimmer mist them or um, paint on them or Santa Claus. Um, so those are fun, a lot of musical note stuff for Christmas. And I always um, do traditional colors for my Christmas mini books. I don't know why, but for some reason this old um, feel to this book just reminds me of Christmases when I was little. So I always do reds and greens and all that good stuff. But this year I kind of added some black in there. Um, I thought it would be kind of neat, a good contrast. So. I will hopefully be doing a video every other day or so on a new page that I do in this book with um, some of the new add-on printables. And I hope you guys like it. Don't forget to check out last year's 
mini album. It was really cool. It was a little more difficult to put together, um, but it had a bunch of pockets and tags, and it was really cute. I thought I had a sample here somewhere of it, but I'm not sure where it went. So there is the lovely Christmas printable book that I made. Um, I can't wait to see what you guys do, and stay tuned because we have a physical kit for December um, with all of Pink Paisley's awesome Christmas stuff, and so you can get a Christmas kit, and those are shipping every day. Um, so same-day shipping on the Christmas kit, um, printable, not printable kit, the other Christmas kit um, ships same day. So the day you order it, it'll ship out as long as you order it before, I believe, 3 o'clock Central Time. So stay tuned for the next video because I'll show you what I've done with that kit. Thanks, guys.